Uh, greetings and salutations. My partner in crime, Mr. Roderick Modlin, is not here. So we've got a stunt double. Uh, that's me. That's you. Is that me? That's, okay. that's you. And, and Dan's going to do the introduction in a South African accent. So what you need to say is, how's it internet? How's it internet? And welcome to Two Guys in SharePoint. And welcome to Two Guys in SharePoint. <laughs> the only SharePoint show at Ignite where everything is not made up and there are no points. So this is the Ignite edition of uh, Two Guys in SharePoint. Yes. And uh, we have our favorite favorites on the show today. Yes. Would you like to introduce them, Dan? I would. This is the immortal Phil. Uh, you are immortal, right? No, I'm not immortal. Oh, um, okay. So the, um, the not immortal Phil and the fantastic Joanne. So the what do Klein we, the of Saskatchewan. Sus, sus, I can't pronounce that. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, welcome to the show. Uh, I know that both of you might have listened to at least one episode or half of one episode. Until yes, you started yes, talking, indeed. probably. You have, you have? Oh, yes. Joe? Yes, I have. Yeah. Yes. Okay, all right. So we're all on the same page. A little bit about yourself, Phil. What is it that you do? What's your star sign? And why are you here? Um, basically, I do a lot of things in, for the community in terms of uh, spreading the word around uh, people's blogs do you and have a real things job, like that. But I do have a real job, yeah. I've been an IT pro for like 29 years, so a long time doing lots of different things. But in the last four, four or so years, I've been doing stuff on SharePoint, uh, migrations and operations around, around SharePoint and around getting into 365, just in terms of getting to learn all the pieces that they are and all the moving pieces and finding that no one could know everything. All right, so. and Joe, from Saskatchewan. From Saskatchewan. Nope. I, um, I'm on my own consulting company for the last couple of years, and I've been in IT for a long time, a couple decades, and uh, right now my focus is all in Office 365, so I'm on a productivity and collaboration team, so I work on the publishing side of SharePoint, uh, as well as all the content services stuff, retention, data protection, that whole aspect, so yeah. And she's a Microsoft MVP, and I won't tell you uh, what she's really, really good at because I call her for that, and I don't want everyone else calling her for that. <laughs> so she's really good at several points about SharePoint that are, I, yeah, so she's fantastic knowledge base for me, and I'm not gonna share. Okay, so for those that have listened to the show, have you listened to the show? Yes, and that's why I'm <laughs> acting this way. Okay. <laughs> Traditionally, before we interview the guests, yes. we go to a segment called In the News. And because today is a special edition, what we're going to do is we're going to go through all the news and announcements that pertain to what we know as IT pros and professionals in the space. Around SharePoint, OneDrive, and all the fancy stuff. Mm -hmm. So, In the News. What do we have as the first item? On the list that's there, Dan, you can literally stare at it and, and, and talk about but it. But I like so looking what, at your eyes. Do you like looking at it? So, so what is the first one? Um, this, uh, the first one is something that, this is called a tease. Is it a tease? This first one is something that uh, us as SharePoint practitioners have been asking for for so long, and that is the ability to bring this wonderful thing called a SharePoint communication site bring that to the root site collection of SharePoint Online. So, you know, you have your tenant name, which is joescrabshack.sharepoint.com. That's automatically created for you when you sign up for Office 365. This is um, announcing that Microsoft is working on the ability to have a communication site be that root site rather than a, what is now a team site, classic SharePoint team site. Does that make sense? Absolutely perfect sense. A lot of people have asked about doing it and some people have found ways around doing that. And talking directly to Microsoft earlier this year, they said, don't do it. There's special stuff in the route that you don't know that's even there. So it's not a normal site. So being able to make that a communication site, making it easy for users to get directly to the root of their site, it makes perfect sense. Does it impact that special stuff that you do, that you talked about? Uh, it probably doesn't on the data protection and retention side, but it would on the publishing side for sure. Did she just tell us what she just outed herself as? 
Yeah, great. Thanks, Joanne. Now everybody's going to be calling you because you're the expert in data retention. <laughs> and now, oh, Why man. have you never phoned me? I also do that stuff. For the obvious reasons. Go ahead, Joanne. I'm, I'm terribly sorry. He no, interrupted that's, you. No, that's, that's cool. The uh, thing I love about it is it doesn't cross that, you know, you don't have to have that site in classic versus everything else in modern, so it kind of gets everything in the modern space, which is good. Oh. Consistency. Yeah. Full, you next up. Okay, so you've got the official news site. Okay, so the one, one official news site coming, giving you all your organizational news in what, it, coming up as opposed to just it being mixed in with all the other news or all the, coming from all the other sites. Are you excited about it? It's really good to have because if you've got a communications department who basically want their stuff up front, in front of, in front of everybody else, um, that's what they really need. They want that organizational use to be front and center as opposed to, oh, someone's team use. So it's, it's a good step. So what about the orgs out there that have actually built product to do this? We know that there are a few companies that will do cascading carousels because news carousel is also one of the things that they've highlighted. Mm -hmm. And there are companies out there that have built web parts to do cascading lookups, not only lookups, but also roll-ups. Mm -hmm. how, how do you feel about, do you think that there's going to be an impact where they're going to have to change their business model? Absolutely. And if they're uh, paying attention to the cloud, uh, that's the way it always is. We, you cannot build the product and then sit on it for you know, years and years and years and think that uh, you're going to be, you have to keep innovating. And so, yeah, they're going to have to innovate. All right. Anything new in your space, that space that he talks about? In, uh, yeah, w one of the big announcements in content services was meta metadata-driven labels, mm. which is huge. That means, based on a content type, you could set a retention label. Okay. Which yeah. is very important for, you know, everybody has all of this information architecture. They have set up content types, but there's never a way to map that to retention. So that's a, that's a huge thing for um, So that you're space. talking about labeling and yes. mapping a label to a retention policy. Not setting up a rights management policy that's assigned to a content type. No, this is, I believe, this is setting up a retention label for a content type. But we could do that with... with you, c you couldn't do that natively, and it could have protection on it as well now. So using uh, Microsoft Information Protection, you could have encryption on that. Yeah, but you had that with rights management services, though, for SharePoint. Yes, but Microsoft Information Protection is kind of that overarching All right. okay. uh, retention mm -hmm. for so it's, SharePoint, it's, OneDrive, Exchange. It's IRM 2.0. Okay. <laughs> Why do you shake your head, Dad? No, I did not. I was like, eh, okay, that's not what it's termed, but in your head, if no, that's the way you need to classify it, then that's great. Fantastic. IRM on steroids. File it. File it in there as 2.0. It's great. So they finally talked about bringing Azure Information Protection functionality into the security and compliance. Area. Yes. And they spoke about it at the beginning of the year as well. Mm -hmm. Does this mean that it's actually finally here? It wasn't just a tease for six months. Well, actually, I think they mentioned they it last it. Ignite uh, initially, yeah, and yeah. so it's been it's been a long time coming, and I'm not sure when it's it's like before the end of 2018. I don't think it's there today. Yeah, but well, uh, we've seen a demo. We've seen a Jeff demo. Jeff Deeper's done a demo, yes. which was quite neat. Yeah, and I mean we've been waiting for it forever. For a very long yeah. time, because yeah. it's very exciting. And Azure IP, for the most part, is very confusing around what is a classification, what is a label. Yeah. Uh, the permission model is all kinds of confusing yeah. because do you assign a group there and then it's got other stuff. So I'm excited about it coming to the security yeah. and compliance center. Yeah. Also, it gives Office 365 admins the opportunity to actually manage it when you are retaining. You can now also protect at the same time. Right, yes. And you're saying that we can do it now with uh, metadata? Uh, yeah, you can associate uh, uh, metadata-driven la labeling. All right, you cool. could not do that before. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Not to I'm so glad you agree with our guest. <laughs> My guest. My guest. I mean, I'm standing in, so that means it's she's out. Right. <laughs> okay. You can pick one. I can just pick anyone. 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 Fantastic, because I want to pick the web part to web part connections oh, in yeah. SharePoint. Oh wow. This seems familiar 
functionality. Yeah. yeah. Hold on. It'll come to you. Did you grab it? Um, but it was very girl. Yeah, it, it was great. Um, the ability to select list content that drives other parts, uh, web parts on the page. Like Modern in, experience. Like in SharePoint 2003. It's fantastic. So Data um, connected, web point. So that's going to be great experience for our yeah. solutions that we're developing. But yes, it, it does seem very familiar. Did you go to sessions today, Phil? I went to a few little sessions today, some stuff on Yammer, and I went to a really nice session from Mr. Glenn here. Oh. So what did uh, he talk about? Good. He was talking about creating a uh, communication site to make as a template and training repository for Flow. Was it OK? It's very good. It's very nice. Between him and Sarah Hussey, they made a, an excellent job. Oh, Sarah was those. there. You should have led with that. We would yeah. have understood. <laughs> so any new cool things that you heard about? This week, um, the last two no, days? no massive announcements. I like, I like the search, having the having that cr across across the whole Microsoft range of Microsoft search. search, and I'm glad they changed they changing the name from Bing for Business because I think we've had enough for business for a long time. So uh, yeah, having that, having that, and having it across one banner, I'd like to see eventually it cr creeping out to all the other workloads that that, that yeah. uh, organizations have. But again, matter of time. Um, but generally, you know, I just like to see the incremental things in, in SharePoint um, and things around OneDrive and all the rest of the 365 stuff. I did notice that there wasn't a lot about some of the other smaller applications in there, sort of I'm talking things like Forms and Planner and things like that. Hmm. There's not much around those things. And there's a lot of people out there asking for, for, for updates well, on that. And I think that's something that, as you know, at Ignite, these announcements are made uh, in sessions as well. And so I think it would be good to go back and look at those sessions mm -hmm. where we may not have heard something in the keynote or in, in one of the other keynotes uh, say that may have been announced or showing, showcasing what's coming. Um, because I do know for forms, for instance, there's new stuff coming um, that I've seen on forms that I've even filled out. And it's like, wait, I want that, I, but I can't get it yet. Uh, so I think the uh, it's coming. It's just when, where when it was announced, where it was announced. So, um, but to, yeah, you have to move over to Dynamics in order to start using Forms, right? Mm. Because that's that's the future of Power. Next, just like that. Do I get to choose? No, actually, you don't. Um, yes, go ahead. Mega Menu. Mm. Oh yeah, a big ask for people for a long time. Yeah. A lot of people wanting a menu, wanting a good menu system. Um, just you know, just instead of having to build or change change one from on a classic site, having a pro having a proper one is um, really really good. But you can't build a modern site within a modern site. So a mega menu is great, but you got to have site, right? Yep. It's going to give you some sort of menu two different content. navigations. Yeah, yeah. But you can't build a modern site inside of a modern site. That makes sense. If I'm going to use a menu, like in the old days, you'd have a mega menu and you'd have subsites, right? And that was driven from there. Turn-based navigation. Oh, you're saying that, okay. <laughs> wow. You can't just keep while. repeating the same thing over and over and expect people to understand you. So the, no. um, oh. you're saying that uh, the way we used to do it was create subsites, which then build the navigation uh, automatically. Yeah. Uh, correct. So this is more about uh, linking to your not only your SharePoint resources, also other 365 resources, and maybe even even uh, outside of 365, right? Uh, so even on-prem sites, whatever. So that's. Um, but you could do that with turn-based navigation, though. linking to anything outside as well. Uh, it was just a no. You could. It's just not in the mega menu kind of format. Yeah. And I think this is uh, actually going back to your other point which makes you actually sound a little smart, and I want to hesitate, but I'll go ahead and go forward. But, you know, there are uh, vendors out there that are doing uh, great internet solutions that use Mega Menu, have that as an option. Well, you know, this is not a, oh, we have this wonderful feature, we're gonna sit on it for a while. You're gonna have to keep innovating. And some of them already are. One that I partner with does, um, they're working on audience targeting within the Mega Menu, and that's not gonna happen in SharePoint. A well, there is right audience now. targeting coming to SharePoint. That's right. Proper Eventually. audience targeting to modern. It's not like the old content query web part where you right. had 
That's true right. audience targeting and it's mm -hmm. not like you can roll up using search the cert yep search because there's part. certain limitations when it comes to doing lookups for mm -hmm. audience targeting using right. the traditional audience that sits in the user profile search. yeah so the content search web part has always respected permissions but that's not audiences right so audiences is more about what you want to show rather than taking away permissions. Yeah. And so that, but so what I'm saying, and again, I hesitate, but I'm saying you're correct. <laughs> Joe? <laughs> yes? Any other things outside of the stuff that we can't talk about that you do for him that... Uh, <laughs> you just said, I, yeah. So what else excited you about Ignite? Um... Oh, I'm thinking of the SharePoint uh, point in time self serve file restore. That was mm -hmm. pretty cool. Mm -hmm. File restore. File restore. File restore. That was mm -hmm. pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So site admins can now restore back to any point in time if you get, you know, if something goes awry, whatever that is. So it's, that's cool. It's funny how Microsoft replaces my sites with the name OneDrive, even though it's the same. Hmm. Okay. And then they built features for OneDrive and now they're rolling it to SharePoint. Right? Yeah. Because it was available at point in time restore for OneDrive. Right? Yes. Yeah. And it also explains the recent uh, upgrade in uh, disk space. Because they're pushing pushing more and more to, you know, people to store more and more in yeah. SharePoint. And they need that extra disk space for it. That with the versioning going up, and uh, now you basically, if you, so if the versioning's up, then you've got more options to restore. That's right. Well, version that that is one of two that inputs into that. Uh, the other being the autosave in Office, uh, creating versions like crazy. And but mm -hmm. the restore is definitely one of those that uh, is driving. Uh, we need more content. I'd, it may have been kind of in parallel streams of saying, "Oh, we are at scale. We're doing a whole lot better with storage, and so we can add additional storage and." And as well as so we can add this uh, additional functionality as well. So it, it's it's fantastic. Anything else from your side? Mm, let me think. Oh, I love um, when you're in a SharePoint document library that's connected to a Microsoft Teams, and you can identify a channel folder visually. Okay, and then go a link, I think, go directly to that team. So that's really a good experience for people that kind of don't know how all of this stuff works together. And you're going to be warned if you try to rename that channel folder because I've already ran into that where end users are renaming folders and it just doesn't work. Oh, uh, renaming it in SharePoint? Yes. yes. Okay. All yeah. Right. Well, that's a good thing. Yeah, because every channel has a folder yeah. within yeah. a library, which folders are evil, but anyway. Uh, but it has a folder, <laughs> and so renaming that breaks yeah. the connection. But it in will SharePoint. let you do it. No, in Teams. Yeah. Now in Teams, you can rename the channel. It doesn't change the folder name. Correct, but yeah. it breaks the link. Right. Teams doesn't know you renamed that folder manually. Oh, yeah. that's it. But that's what I said, and you weren't listening. I said if you do it in SharePoint, <laughs> it will break. But you can rename it. No, that's what I said. You were no, agreeing with I me. Said. I wasn't agreeing with you. This is where you always agree with me. Well, we just Stop. know it breaks. Yeah, so it breaks. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Any more things that excited you? Mm. Dan. Yes. What has excited you about Ignite? And don't read off the list. I'm not reading off the list. Because you did not do your homework for the show. There was homework? As it would a imply we have some sort of As a co-presenter, which is what this. you alluded to. Yeah. You should have done some research, Dan. This is our thing I did do it. some research. I showed you the list. I, I'm really excited about OneDrive again. Why? I, because um, for a while, the focus was on SharePoint, and then it moved to Teams, because Teams was the new kid. It's still the focus. Though, it, it's the focus, but what I'm saying is OneDrive, the, the enhancements that are coming to OneDrive, um, the protection, the ability to... Um, uh, share effect. I, it just I'm excited about OneDrive again, and 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 rejuvenated by by what they're they're paying attention to the needs that OneDrive fills. Um, and that that does. I, there's a lot of things to be excited about, but that mm -hmm. that I am seeing that here at the conference, and I'm excited. 
Well, they've got this new comment section in OneDrive where you can mm -hmm. comment on files. So, so what does that mean though for the collaborative ecosystem? So if someone comments on a file in OneDrive, mm -hmm. do you move collaboration to the file then? Instead of keeping it in Teams? Well, yes. Uh, the I think what we need to understand is um, we ha we don't have the full story about like where those comments are stored, yeah. right? But when we're making comments, for instance, in the document, and we're at mentioning people, yeah. being able to you know that uh, not only notifying them, but yeah. think about like maybe we create a task for them, yeah. you know, for them to to look at that. And so um, I, I think it's more about we, we we do we as IT pros need to pay attention to that yeah. and making sure that we educate our users and they know how to use the product. But um, I, the ability to really just be collaborative and not have to, I don't want to have to do a document, uh, work on a document and then ring you up or IM you or email you and say, hey, go look at that document, right? Just do it right there and keep going. At mention, it goes mm -hmm. straight to the paragraph. Mm -hmm. Some other things that I really liked this year, well, literally when uh, Jeff was doing some cool stuff, there's a new SharePoint Admin Center coming, mm -hmm. better functionality. Some other things around files, Mm -hmm. uh, there's a new files experience in Teams now, so you've actually got metadata. Mm -hmm. Bringing in a, a lot of SharePoint functionality into that Teams files. We're hoping that it's going to come to OneDrive, because that will make Lorian's day. Mm. Because, well, OneDrive, the sync client, so you can see it in Windows Explorer. Mm. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. yep. That's the only thing Lorian's complaining about. Well, he's complaining. Hey, that's the only thing he complains about? Well, that's the only thing that he's been complaining about. No, there's been three things. Oh. The last 24 hours that he complains okay. about. Uh, hu hub site multi geo support. Yeah. So you yeah. can pull that in. Mm -hmm. uh, the other things are proper audiencing. We spoke about that. But it's nice what you can do with audiencing now mm -hmm. in modern. And this is all about the modern experience, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's all about modern. It's not. I don't think they're building anything for classic anymore. No. Mm -mm. General availability of SharePoint Server 2019 yes. as of today. Fantastic. Yeah. However, there's no hub sites for SharePoint 2019. Yeah, you have to think about, if you look at the features in SharePoint 2019 and look at where everything was in SharePoint Online, it's basically at the beginning of the year of 2018 or is the, where the feature parity is for server 2019. Yeah, but you can't build a mega menu for a modern experience, team site experience in SharePoint on-prem. Correct, because that was not at the beginning of this year. So how do you build that? How do you create a modern, how do you glue modern team sites together in SharePoint On-Prem 2019? If there's no hub sites? The same way we've been doing it. Use classic experience. I did not say that. <laughs> Manually creating that menu. Mm -hmm. and, and injecting the menu. That's right, right. yeah. Okay. Or, you know, going with a partner product, but yes. Yeah. So there have been uh, a couple of other things like heat maps. So you can do sort of trend mapping on what people are using and it's mm, nice. Yeah. Which is it's nice. Yeah. When, yeah. For, like when can yeah. I release this news item or something and yeah. people yeah. are actually yeah. going to read it. Yeah. 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 So that's, yeah. that's yeah. actually quite mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. yeah. And those sorts yeah. of experiences also work in if you've got a classic site as your intranet. You still, if you go to the right URL, you can get to that back end and you can still see that. On have you been hacking well. that? No, yeah. not hacking. Just trying things a little Just bit. Just going to the page and creating a link to it then. And yep. then it's a link on your internet. So a couple of other things. There's um, uh, updated views on what happens on a page. So mm -hmm. they've supercharged the supercharging of the supercharged web page, web, web, web with, bots. With turbos. More turbos. Mm -hmm. So last year, remember, they talked about the superhero, the hero experience, and mm -hmm. the supercharging of the web, mm -hmm. web parts. And they've done it again this year. Mm -hmm. More supercharge. So more juice. Yeah. And then I think the last thing I wanted to talk about was not only do we have roll-ups of sites and news and all of those things, we now have roll-up of calendar events. Yeah. So there's the new fancy streamlined event news, event web part, mm -hmm. and now you can do roll-ups. Yeah. Even more bad news for organizations that have been doing cascading lookups. Well, the, the problem with those uh, calendar overlays, which yeah. is what we've had in the yeah. past. Yeah. We have a limit as to yeah. the number you can do. Yeah. We have a limit for where those things live and how you can combine them. 
So I, I really like this ability to dynamically roll it up and not have those limits of, of oh, you can only have 10. Well, I need 20. So bad. Yeah. All right, so in closing, any good fancy words from your side on data protection for the people out there? Or search. Yeah. Oh, or no. Search. Um, I really like where Microsoft is taking this space. I, I think they're trying to make it so it's kind of built right in from the moment that document's created all the way through all these collaboration scenarios until it's finally at end of life. And so that's, it's, it's pretty um, obvious that they're trying to make that as easy as possible for organizations to bring that in. So I'm encouraged by that. And yeah. how do people find you on the interwebs? Uh, my Twitter account is Joanne C. Klein. I've been told, Phil says the C stands for Canada, so that's a good way to remember it. I'm Canadian. Um, and I have a blog where I blog a lot about SharePoint and retention um, information architecture, and that is joanncline.com. Full. Okay. Last words from you? Last words. Um, basically, just seeing how things go. And everybody out there, just network, network, network while you're at night. Yeah. Things like that is, is so important for people. Um, I'm just enjoying the, t the time here, so. And if anyone has a question for you on the Twitteratis, you're all, all there. Yep, I'm always there. Uh, my, my Twitter handle is at W-O-R-R-E-L-P-A. Mm -hmm. Worrell P-A. Yeah. Okay. Dan, anything from your side? I, I'm encouraged by the way Microsoft is headed and from the open initiative, data initiative, to uh, focusing on frontline workers, to um, bringing in um, the, the IT pro to en enabling them to uh, help their users and it making it easier, it's uh, fantastic and, and I've, that's one of the themes that I've seen um, from the conference so far. So I am excited about uh, moving forward. Great, and that's a wrap, people. Thank you for. And you much can find me uh. at <laughs> on Twitter at uh, Daniel Glenn D A N I E L G L E N N N, and then DanielGlenn.com. Uh, um, it it's two ends. Two it's ends. not just one. Okay. Um, and uh, now we are actually wrapping up. Um, so where can they find us, Dan? They can uh, find all of us at regarding365.com. All right. Where can they find the two guys SharePoint show? On the interwebs. So thank you for joining us. You can find us at twoguysandsharepoint.co.za, on Twitter at twoguysandsharepoint.co.za, and your podcast app of choice. Cheers, cheers.